Greetings to you. You are most welcome to physics event. Don't forget to subscribe and to share this video with those that need it. Before you hear, there is a project work on the topic reflection of light at curved mirror surfaces, precisely concave mirror. This project was inspired from the little thing you are seeing in my hand here, the concave mirror in the lab. Uh, if you put this guy under the sun, um, the rays will fall on it and it will convert at the point. If you put any paper there, the paper will catch fire. That was where this project was inspired from. Uh, the guy before you here can cook your food. Then I just explained the rays of light will fall on this guy and then they will converge at the point. The point of conversion is called the focal point of the mirror. And so it is designed in such a way that it can only work when there is sun. So the way it is right now, when the sun is on this side, you tilt it this direction and then the rays will converge here. If the sun is at the top for the day, you tilt it up. The other side, you tilt it this way. Uh, this project was designed to, uh, to help motivate students in physics and in science in general. So in today's video, I will be explaining the physics behind everything you are seeing here. Stay tuned to the end and you will not regret to coming to this channel. God bless you. In our previous video, we looked at the reflection of light rays on plain mirror surfaces. In today's video, we want to concentrate on the reflection of light rays on curved mirror surfaces and precisely the concave mirror. So, uh, there are two types of concave, I mean, there are two types of curved mirror surfaces. We have the convex mirror and then the concave mirror. have the con the convex mirror also known as the divergent mirror the convex mirror looks like this the reflecting side is out This is the concave mirror, here is the pole of the mirror, and here is your F, and here is your C. The focal point, the center of curvature, the pole of the mirror. And from the pole of the mirror to the center of the curvature, we call it the principal axis. The concave mirror is also known as the divergent mirror. Reason being that when rays of light fall on this mirror, on the surface, when rays of light fall on this mirror, on this surface, they spread out. The rays spread out. Rays of light from infinity falling on it. So this is what you have for the concave, I mean the convex mirror. When the rays of light from infinity falls on it, the rays are said to spread out to diverge. For this reason, this guy is called the convex mirror. And so from here to here is 
the pole of the mirror and the distance from the pole of the mirror to the focal point is called the focal length of the mirror while the distance from the pole of the mirror to see the center of curvature is called the radius of curvature however we examiners don't uh, actually ask you to draw diagrams concerning this they only set questions theoretical, theoretical questions on this for you to solve so in this video we shall be concentrating more on the concave mirror so let's move on so the next mirror we have is the concave mirror The concave mirror is also known as the converging mirror. Why is it called the converging mirror? Just look at what I'm doing here right now. For the concave mirror, this is what you have. The reflecting side is inside. And this point is the pole of the mirror. And here uh, is the focal point. And somewhere here is the center of curvature. So, uh, when rays of light from infinity falls on this surface, falls on this surface, the rays are said to reflect back and converge at this point. The rays of light from infinity hit on the surface. Let's suppose the sun. When the sun radiates its rays and it falls on the surface. This is exactly what happens. So what I showed you in, in that project work, this is the physics behind it. So this point of convergence, if you put any paper here, the paper will catch fire. And that was actually the, the point where we were motivated to go to that project. So for this reason, we call it the converging mirror. Concave mirror or the converging mirror. Uh, the distance from the pole of the mirror to, to F is called the focal length and from, the, from P to C, center of curvature, is called the radius of curvature. Next thing on the line is uh, in, uh, the, the rules governing ray diagrams. The examiners may ask you rules. We will state the rules for drawing ray diagrams. Rules for drawing ray diagrams. Ray diagrams in this topic is something very, very important, and precisely, I I want to concentrate on concave mirror concave mirror I want to concentrate on concave mirror so rules for drawing ray diagram there are specifically three rules for drawing ray diagram when I ask you an object is placed at C at F between F and C beyond C draw the ray diagram and state the properties of the image formed or the characteristics of the image that is formed. So, rule number one if I draw my, my horizontal line, my supposed concave mirror, the pole, the F, and the C, rule number one states. A ray of light passing parallel to the principal axis 
The principal axis is the point from the pole or the mirror, the center of the mirror here to this point. A ray of light passing parallel to the principal axis. After reflection of the mirror, it will pass through the focal point. That is rule number one. Rule number two. A ray of light passing through the focal point after reflection of the mirror, it will pass parallel to the principal axis. Rule number three. A ray of light A ray of light passing through the center of curvature after reflection of the mirror it will return through the same route on deviated. So we are going to combine these rules to draw some very very important ray diagrams. Don't forget that ray diagrams is the heartbeat of this topic and your sound knowledge in ray diagrams will give you uh, a secret to generate all the mirror equations you will need to know. So the next thing here is how to draw ray diagrams correctly using these rules. Uh, the, the, the usage of these two rules is, uh, is dependent on the position of the objects along the principal axis. It could be here, the object will be placed here. When the object is placed here, we say it's placed in front of C or beyond C. If I ask you an object is placed in front of C or beyond C, an object is placed at C, an object is placed between F and C, an object is placed at F, an object is placed between P and F. Draw the ray diagram and state the characteristics of the image formed by such an object. So, you may combine rule number one or two, or rule number one and three, or all of the rules, depending on the position of the objects along the principal axis. So next thing, next thing on the line, we want to draw ray diagrams correctly. So drawing of ray diagrams. In drawing ray diagrams, I have developed a secret I always love to tell my students. And this secret, I believe it will help you very well in what you are doing. So, at this point, please pick up your Tartessian transparent ruler, your drawing material, maybe a protractor where you can use it to draw the concave mirror, and then uh, just replicate exactly what I'm doing here on the board. I want to draw a straight line here from zero to from zero to fifty, from zero to fifty. Good. The line is from 0 to 50. You may, you may draw from 0 to 15. So I want to draw my line of symmetry at 10 cm. So I want to draw my focal points at uh, my focal point. This is, well, this is 5, 10, 20. Let me use the other ruler. This one is. I want to draw. Yes. This is it. I want to draw my my focal points. 
at 20 and then my center of curvature sorry my focal point uh, 10 20 at that is 20, 20 each yes my focal point at 30 and my center of curvature at 50 good so this is 20 20 10 so I want to extend this line don't forget this is my C this is my F and this is my line of symmetry good at this point I will now if you have your protractor just place your protractor like this and then draw a curved line so I'll draw my suppose concave mirror from this point to this point is called the aperture of the mirror from this point to this point is called the aperture of the mirror let's, let's level it out A and what our B so the we are dealing with concave mirror here so this is the pole of the mirror from here to here is 10 cm from me from here to here is 20 from here to here is 20 the, the rule is that the distance from the pole of the mirror to the focal point must be the same as the distance from the focal point to the center of curvature so from the pole of the mirror to the center of curvature is what we call the principal axis so the next thing uh, I'm going to do is to I said initially that from here from the focal point to the pole of the mirror it is called what? we call it what? the focal length of the mirror and so the distance from, from the pole of the mirror to the center of curvature is called the radius of curvature of the mirror so since here to here is the same as here to here it implies that you need 2f to get 1r so we write that 2f is equal to what? r and r is equal to what? 2f is equal to r and r is equal to what? And sorry, and f is equal to what? r all over 2 call this equation 1 equation what? 2 yes that is the first mirror equation so right now we want to place an object between f and c and let us uh, the, the object distance I want the object distance to be 10 sorry the object height is 10 cm so object height is equal to what? 10 what? cm my object height is 10 cm I have my 2f is equal to r and my f is equal to what? r all over 2 equation 1 equation what? 2 so the next thing is to apply the rules object height is 10 cm so a ray of light please don't put it like this not like this make sure it is straight everything here is straight so a ray of light passing parallel to the principal axis with your arrow in after reflection at the mirror it will pass through this point it will pass through the focal what, point just follow me and replicate what I'm doing in your book. Good. If you pass through this point, that is rule number one. Let's apply the, the second rule. A ray of light passing through the focal point of the mirror after reflection at the mirror surface. Don't forget to don't put it like this, not like this, but let it be straight. 
make sure everything is uniform. After reflection at the surface of the concave mirror, let me extend this line. It was not long enough. After reflection at the surface, it will pass parallel to the principal word as a it's an arrow this way. So this point of convergence is where the image is formed. And so one thing you need to know here is that all the images formed by the concave mirror, they are inverted. Meaning if the object is placed up, the image will be formed like this. So let us measure the image height. From here to this point is the image height. So for my measurements here, the image height is a 17 cm. So to be the arrow will point down. This is the object arrow pointing up, and this is the what? The image arrow pointing down. So say image height is what 17 what cm. That is that for that. So the next thing is to uh, include the rest of the geometry, the rest of the geometry. So the distance from where the object was placed to the, to the line of symmetry of the mirror is called your U. Your U simply means object distance. From here to here is object distance, from here to here is object height. So the distance from where the image is formed to the pole of the mirror, we call it what? The distance from where the image is formed, this is the point, to the pole, to the pole of the mirror is called what? Your V. This V means image distance. Image distance, image height. So with this we can generate all. I'm sorry. Before we do that, let us now state the properties of the image form. Write the characteristics of what image. This is where students get it all wrong. So I will leave you on how to do that. The first thing is that the object was upright, the image is what inverted. So you write image inverted. Good. Number two, the object was 10 cm, the object height was 10 cm, but the image height is 17 cm. So you write that image is magnified. Image is magnified. Number three, the, the image is formed in front of C or beyond C. Right. Image is in front of C or beyond what? C. Number four, the image is real. Image is what? Real. All images formed by the concave mirror are real images, except when the object is placed between P and F. In that case, the image is formed outside here. We call it a virtual image, an image that cannot be cut on the screen. So this, with this you can draw any ray diagram. When the object is placed here, just make sure that your measurements are correct and then you don't have any issues. So right now we can use this to generate all the mirror equation. From there we have, we have our 2, our 2F is equal to R equation 1. We have our F is equal to R all over 2, we have this expression over 2, and from here we have, we have 
f the focal length object distance image distance so we can now generate our famous general mirror equation so we'll say that our one all over f is given as one all over u plus one all over b we call it equation number three the famous general mirror equation the next thing we want to write here is the magnification of the mirror magnification capital m is given as image distance divided by what of the distance it has no units or magnification m is given as what image height divided by object height image height divided by what object height so in this case let's call this equation number four equation number five in this case our magnification here is 17 17 cm divided by what 10 watt cm that is the magnification of what this mirror the last one is the power of the mirror or the power of the lens p is that one all over f one all over f now, to this, we have come to the end of this particular video. In the next video, I want to use it to draw more ray diagrams and also solve questions relating to this. Please stay tuned and watch all the video series. God bless you. Bye-bye.